all that are present on this evening and to all our listeners that are online. We thank God once again for another opportunity to be present in the house of the Lord that we may be able to come down and study from his holy and his righteous word. And as always, we pray for me on teaching this lesson tonight. And as the deacons have prayed, I'm also asking for the visitation of the Holy Spirit that it will come in and just take control, remove me, speak, uh, to bring out to us what we need out of these lessons and help us to not just be hearers of them, but doers, especially in the times we are living in. We, uh, we have a great lesson uh, on, to, on tonight. Uh, and the subject of our lesson is a, a lame man healed. And our scriptures come out of the book of Acts. Chapter 3, verses 1 through 16. So we have 16 verses on tonight. Uh, a lame man healed. And regardless of the title of our lessons, all these lessons are, 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 are centered around having faith in God. Uh, and even in talking about the lame man healed, we, we have sickness now that we never had before. So he's still in the healing business. Uh, these lessons are designed to help us, and Deacon Gibbons says something that's so true. The last two years, these lessons seem like they're centered around. I know they always been like that, but, but it appeared to many that they, ever since the coronavirus, God is speaking to us about the condition that the world is in. Yes, sir. Uh, and Reverend Jones said something Sunday. Herman John, that, that was so true. I don't know if y'all caught him when he talking about that atlas, at, what is it, atlas? Mm -hmm. that, that statue? Yes, holy yeah. world. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I truly believe that the only thing that's keeping the wrath of God off America is the church. Mm -hmm. And Deacon Newman, you said something the other night, and I was glad that you said that. Uh, he said that he still think he's hoping in America. And that meant something to me because it seemed like something is so bad in our nation. I, I've been feeling in my spirit God is to let something real bad happen in this country. But but uh, when he said that, that he believed his hope, and that's what we ought to do is but be believing that is some hope. And we ought to believe, be, believe that the hope is centered around the church. Because, like I tell you, if you study your Bible, as long as the nation of Israel was doing good, the, God didn't put uh, 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 famine and all this stuff on the, the nations around them. As long as everything was all right with the nation, everybody prospered. But as soon as the nation of Israel strayed away from God and started, a lot, women's allowed me to use this whoring after other gods, man, it got hard on everybody. And, and, it, and, and it's better in America than we think it is. Yes. Have y'all seen what's going on over in Haiti? Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it, it's terrible. Yeah. So we, we have something to be thankful about. about. Uh, let's get on to our lesson now. A lame man healed. And our scriptures is coming out of uh, Acts chapter 3, verse 1 through 16. And let me say this about the we, we do know who the writer is in the book of Acts. Yes, sir. Okay. Dr. Luke. Luke. So with, with Luke being the writer in the book of Acts, a lot of stuff you could go back in the book of Luke mm -hmm. and find out what he had to say about this. And, and, and uh, Acts 3 and 1 said, Now Peter and John went up to together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. Uh, they went and they prayed three times. Uh, if you want to find out when the three time was, real quickly, if somebody finds Psalm 55 and 17, it, it tells us uh, that they went to the temple 
and, and prayed three times. Now, in our lesson, Psalm 55 and 17, and in our lesson said it was the, they went into the temple, uh, went up together into the temple, the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. Did you find it? Excuse read? me, see. Yeah. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. Evening, morning, and noon. Uh, when the Bible talks about time, it's somewhat different as how we look at time. We probably would have said morning, noon, and evening. But in the Jewish custom, it's a little bit different on how they look at time as we look at it. And, but this is the, the ninth hour, which is the last hour that they have some of them get together to pray. And it's the ninth hour, and it's 3 o'clock in the evening. And we find Peter and John, the two of the inner circle, that they are going to the temple, and they are going up to send a prayer to God. And in the verse 2, it said, And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Now, let me tell you something about this. Uh, why would he call him a, a certain man lame from his mother's womb? The way he was born, it was intended for him to be born like this. All of this is part of God's plan. That God is going to use this man that was born for this purpose to, to fulfill what we're going to learn in the scriptures today. Now, Isaiah had prophesied, I don't know if I, I wrote the, the, the scripture down, but Isaiah had prophesied about when Jesus come that he was going to be doing these things. He was going to be healing the land. Isaiah had prophesied that 700 years before it actually happened. It might be Isaiah. I got some Isaiah 3, 5, and 6. Uh, if you want to run over there real quickly because we got so many scriptures. Uh, but, but, but this man was born for this purpose. That 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 we're going to take this opportunity, what we're going to learn into our lesson, to teach us to have faith in, in our Lord Jesus Christ. He was, he was lame from his mother's womb, and he was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Uh, you know, you can say what you want to, and, and, and I've already, uh, it, it always uh, caught my attention to where they were going to lay this man that was <coughs> lame from birth, uh, couldn't stand. He had to be carried there, and he had to be laid at a gate called Beautiful. And when you look at the picture, at the gate called beautiful, but is this a beautiful sight? To bring a man there and lay him at this gate that's called beautiful. And all the man came there was, uh, he was asking alms of them that entered into the temple. And, and the fact that what, what he was doing and the people that was bringing him there, they was simply, and, and I think, who did I hear? Deacon Gibbard or somebody was talking about that. Deacon Gibbard. He was, they was actually wanting the people that was going into the temple to have mercy yeah. on this man. And it's where they was bringing him, thinking that if I bring him here to this temple, to this place called Gate Beautiful. The man can't help himself. He can't work. <clears throat> He's been like this all his life. So they came there 
looking for mercy, which is a, a form of money, that's what they was after, into the people that was entering into God's temple. And during that time, see, we have so many programs now in America where people can go and get aid. But during this time, they didn't have those, these type of places. So the people thought enough about whoever his people were, thought if, if he can get mercy anywhere, he ought to be able to get it at the temple. Because let me tell you something. Now, they could have took him somewhere else, and he would not, would not have gotten no mercy. Somebody might say, how do you know? Oh, you, you really want to know how I know? Do you, do you really want to know how I know, Reverend Paul? Right. Somebody run over to Luke 16, 19 through 21. Luke, and this is Brother Luke again, the writer of Acts. You can't get mercy everywhere. And all he wanted was on, he, he was thinking that he was going to get some mercy in the form of money. Anyone find it? Luke 16, 19 through 21. That was a certain rich man. What, what kind of man? Rich. Rich man. There was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, full of sores, and desired to be fed with the of the rich man's table. Moreover, the dog came to lick his sores. Did you hear? Did y'all hear what he just read? That was another beggar. If somebody took him and, and laid him at, at the rich man's gate, mm -hmm. and, and he dressed in purple every day, fine linen, and he had the best of food to eat, and, and they was taking him now, looking for somebody to have some mercy on him. But guess who had mercy on him? The dog. The dog had mercy on him, and the rich man didn't even want to look at it. And when the rich man would go down there and look at it, if you read the Bible, it says he looked down on him. But in the end, guess where he had to look to see him? He had to look up to see him. Where are you trying to go with this? The more money people get, the more money that they want. It's enough rich people in America that they can feed all of these people that's hungry. If they just had some mercy. And the reason they don't have no mercy because mercy should be found where? Well, at the Lord's house. We had two examples of a man looking for some mercy in the form of money. And, and one of them, the dog, had more mercy than, than the rich man. And this is why come America is in the shape that she's in because everybody's reaching and grabbing for everything they can get. And if we're not careful, we'll be the same way. Amen. Now, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with working, making your money earnestly and all of that. But, but you know, what would it profit a man if he gained the whole world? And, and, and lose his soul. So, so we find out here, if this is why they was coming uh, to, to, to the Lord house. And the time that they was coming. They, they was coming when they was going in to have prayer service. Looking for a blessing from a man that was born like this. Let me tell you something. You know another reason that we ought to be able to praise God and make all this noise in here when we come in here on Sunday morning? Now, it's different between Sunday and the rest of the week. That's right. Because on Sunday, when we come to do what? We should. It's when you come to thank God that things are as well in my life as they are. Now, I don't know about y'all, but things are not perfect in my life. I, I got some problems. Thank you. I got relatives. And I, I know people that are struggling. I, I got family members. Things are not well in their life. Amen. So when I come in here on Sunday morning, yeah. I, I'm going to praise God because things are 
as well in my life as they are. Now, keep in mind, you could be like this man that was born like this. He didn't do anything. His mother and his parents didn't do anything for him to be lame. This was God. He was born like this. So what are you trying to say? We got reason to praise God. That we are not lame and can't take care of our own sin. We ought to thank God that I got to, that when you get up in the morning, Lord, thank you for the activities. We, we say things, but do we mean what we be saying? Uh, we done heard this prayer, and what we do is come in here and recite something that we've heard that sounds good. I thank you, Lord, when I got up this morning with a roof over my head. I thank you, Lord, that I had a reasonable portion of health and strength. I thank you, Lord, for the activities. Show you thinking that I'm just saying. And when you come to his house, because we could be in the same condition that this man is. And, 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 and uh, uh, Brother Numa, I, I'd rather work for what I want than have to beg for it. And I thank God that I can work and I can earn my living and, and don't have to be out begging for it. And, and here the man comes seeking help. At the Lord house. And thank God. There was another man like I was saying. That, that, that they sent to the rich man house. And don't think that the rich people care anything about you. If you want to know something about somebody who cares something. It's about Jesus. So we find. That this is why they brought him. To the Lord house. Asking for arms, asking for mercy in the form of money. And verse 3, who sent Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked of arms. And again, this arm, he, he was expecting a, you could see him out there with a little cup out there. And all he wanted to do is make the cup rattle. <laughs> Put a little something in the cup to make it rattle. And like I was saying, they, they, didn't, they wasn't set up now. We have all these different agencies where you can go and get help in America. And the only help that they knew where he could get was here at the temple during the time where they was going in to be praying unto God. And then in verse 4, it said, And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John and said, look upon us. Now, let me ask you something. It's something always in these scriptures that, that ought to get our attention. What if the man was right there at the end of my truck? How many, you don't have to ask the question, how many could see that man sitting right there where my truck is for, at the Lord house, with a cup in his hand, begging, want somebody to drop. How many would do what in verse four? You, you know what most people would do? Somebody help. They wouldn't even look at him. They wouldn't even want to make eye contact with him. Because here this better is. This sometimes this is the mindset. We, here this better is. Getting ready to ask me for something. So we wouldn't even make eye contact with him. But what about this inner circle of God? In verse 4, Peter fastened his eyes upon him. And John said, look on us. Not only would they look at him, but they would ask him also to look at us. And I'm telling you, we're living in a society now. And this ought to be something for God's people. They can't stand and look at him. Go ahead. The exact same thing happened to me last week. But I used to play basketball with our Lord. Uh huh. And I don't see him a couple of times, but I just sit down and look. But I see him on Sunday. And I was pretty broke, you know. I was feeling a little bad. Uh -huh. 
Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Something, yeah. But it's like you see, to read this the same day. Same thing. Same. Yeah. 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 Because he reminded me that he had said something to me earlier before. And I didn't say that. <clears throat> yeah. He, he reminded me. Of that. Yeah. It's something. This is good. It, it's something. And we know that there are a lot of gangs out there. There are a lot of people that's out there who want, want money to do drugs, that's all and everything. But, uh... Pastor Porter, a situation similar to that happened when one Wednesday we were meeting for mission. Uh -huh. And we had just had a lesson on Sister uh, Trotter just did a lesson on uh, helping those that are in need. Uh -huh. And this lady came knocking on the door. It was locked, of course, because it was just women here. They're knocking on the door, and she was, she seems this frantic, you know. Could you please help me? So I unlocked the door, and I invited her inside the door. And she told me that she, her children were in the car. And I looked out, because I wanted to make sure that she was really telling me the truth. She, they were. The kids were in the car, about three of them. And uh, she said, I just need help. We don't have any food. Uh, I don't know, there's a lot of different things she was telling me. Uh -huh. And then she started crying, just like we said, you know, this man was doing. She started crying. And, uh, you know, you couldn't help but try to help this lady. Uh -huh. And she was with children in the car. We had just had a lesson when we talked about this. And it's miraculous how God does things, you know. <coughs> He sent, I believe he sent this lady to see what we were going to do. I know Sister Turner probably Tessia. remember that day. Yeah, I so what we did was we gave her our offering, and if anybody else had anything else they had to contribute, we gave it to her. Y'all gave her an offering that y'all took up for, yes. for them, and that's what you should have done. Yeah, so. And see, when you do this, you God going to bless you. Uh, that's the scripture said, when you lend to the, when you give to the poor, you lend it to God. You know, and I'd rather lend to God than anybody. And, and I know, uh, I'm not trying to brag on myself, but when people come here at this church and I take them in my office, uh, a lot of my, I know they might be trying to run a game, but I give them something, you know, uh, because it's one thing nobody will ever be able to say. Man, I went over to the Green Meadow and that old pastor over there. I asked him for a little money because I was needing something. He wouldn't give me nothing. Nobody could say that about this church in the past. And I'm going to tell you something else. Uh, the time that people have come here in need and I felt a real desire to help them, and I've asked the church to go into their pocket, man, the church have always exceeded anything. Because when I do that, that that's something that I, that's an expectation that I have. When, when I'm asking somebody to help, it, it might be, I, I hope we could at least come up with about $300. This, this is the thought that going, I hope we could at least come up. In, in, in our time, it's been way above what my desire was to help that person. And this is why I'm, this is a blessed church, y'all, uh, when it comes to our fun. Because there are some churches that did not back, bounce back from those two years that the church was shut down. And then there was some, when they tried to bounce back, they got hit with the freeze. There are a lot of churches still torn up where the freeze broke the pipes and stuff. They have not been able to prepare their church. But, but thank God, we was able to take care of this church. And I don't mind telling y'all about that. We, we were doing better financially during the, coron the coronavirus period when this church was shut down. We did better than we was when the church was up fully running. And I give all that credit to the church family. And we got to keep doing that. And these lessons are designed. And when we could help somebody, we can't always help. 
and, and, and it's left up to the individual. I, don't, I, I won't tell nobody else to do nothing, but this is what I have to do because of the talent that I have. Nobody can say that old preacher over there at that church. And, and it's a possibility that they might need that for to help their child or something. I, I don't know. And then if they take advantage of they're not taking advantage of me. That's between them and God. So they're going to have to answer to him about that. that uh, Sometimes the, the wallet is so light. But it's light because there ain't nothing in it. But it's always enough in it that I can help somebody in need. And, and for that reason, and, and let me say this real quickly and I'm going to move on. I remember I had a 53 Chevrolet pickup truck. I was going to rebuild it. Uh, and one morning, me and my son, we was out riding in it. And, and, uh, and it was a guy had a, it was a collector's, I don't know what kind of car it was, but I could tell it was real expensive. And uh, he had, his car had quit on him. And... I saw him sitting there, it was early one Sunday morning. I wasn't in church at this time. And I stopped and I asked him what's the problem because I would look, I admire, I love old cars. And I stopped asking him about the car and he said, man, I don't drive it that much. And he said, I got up this morning, I was driving, I pulled up in here and went there. He said, it's nothing but the battery is down. Would you give me a boost? And I had some cable. And I jumped him out, right? <laughs> and he wanted to pay me. He, had, he wanted to give me $20. And I told him, no, man, uh, you know, help somebody. <laughs> we got back in the car. She asked Dad, I can't believe you didn't take that $200. <laughs> he, said, he said, Daddy, you didn't ask him. And he said, Daddy, looking at that car he drives, I believe this man got a lot of money. <laughs> he said, you should have took that $20. <laughs> and about, it, it wasn't two months later, he and I was riding again. And I pulled up at a red light, and when I got ready to pull off, my truck out of poop. And next thing I knew, I saw smoke coming out under the hood. And I wouldn't raise my hood up, and when it pooped, I guess a spark came, and one of the spark plug wires was burning under the, the car. And it was close to the carburetor. And it, I had a 350 engine in there, and I didn't have no breather cap on the thing because you press, you know why they have no breather cap on. You gotta get some air, get some Yeah, but with more speed. That's it. So I was kind of scared with that fire being so close to the carburetor. And then all of a sudden, a guy passed by and he saw that he jumped out and he had a fire sting. And man, he put it out, and I was so happy. And I went into my pocket to give him something. He, no, man, if you see somebody in help, help them. And I told Chad, I said, do you know why this happened? I said, you remember that guy we, we helped over there? I said, I didn't take nothing here. I said, man, this truck was getting ready to burn up. So that was a lesson. And if you're always going to pay somebody to charge you, uh, you, you understand what I'm saying? If you always want money from, for what little favor you do, you're going to end up having to pay money for somebody to help you. This is the God that we serve. Yeah. And when we learn to live, see, we forfeit so many blessings. You know, and this is not about how much money he had. It was just to be able to help somebody. You know, but, but, but what was that in verse 4? Yeah. But they was able to look at him, and he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Now, first of all, they was able to have eye contact with him, and when... Uh, and when Peter, with John, said, look on up, the first thing the man did was he was obedient. Now, some of these people that you <clears throat> fool with out here, now they, they would act up in a way that well, you won't, won't want to give them nothing. Yes, yes. They, they could act real crazy out here begging and going to act crazy with you. Yes. But, the, but what this man did when they told him to look, he was obedient. And my brother, I don't care what it is, whatever you do, obedience is something that's very important. When you learn obedience. And because he was obedient, he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. So he looked back at them, and this is an act of obedience. And then when you get verse 6, then Peter said, Silver, 
and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And first of all, hear these two disciples, these two godly men, out doing Jesus' work, they didn't have nothing. They, 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 they was not, didn't have no money according to what they say. Do y'all realize we're living in a time now it's getting so high. The demand is so high. Now, and, and let me tell you something. If you want to have people that's going to fellowship with you and do these things, you, you just about don't have to start coming up with more money. People used to do stuff for nothing. You just can't come get nobody to come in here and preach no more for free. It, it, it's a price. And, and the price that it costs now, it's known. And, and you can fall in the category of being a church that's a, a church that's being a cheap church. And, and when you want something to rip off, when you want some of these preachers to come, oh no. They ain't, they, they ain't gonna give you nothing. This is the time we live in. You gotta pay people now to come sing. You gotta pay people now to come speak on program. My brother, this is the time we living in. And either you can do it, or they won't come. It, it's just the time that we are living in. But, but these two men said, silver and gold, I have. And let me tell you something, there's nothing wrong with having silver and gold. It, it's nothing wrong with having money in your pocket. But you have to know who gave it to you. And opportunities come for God to expecting you to use it. You, 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 like he said, when you lend it to, give it to them, you're lending to me. God is not going to come up out of the sky because somebody's out here wanting $10 and, and put the $10 in his hand. He got people that he could put in their path. Think about what the Reverend Stewart used to say. If you, if, if, if you get up and do what? Travel where he tell you to go, you're going to get your blessing. And it's not always about what we receive. It's a blessing to help somebody. Have you ever helped anybody and, and, and they said, thank you? you? You know what I tell them when they tell me if I help them financially? A stranger out on the street and he said, thank you. You know what I tell them? Thank God. That's what I tell him. I tell him, thank God. That's what I tell him. Thank God. Teaching them who to give the thanks to. See, it, it's so many things. When we think about the, uh, uh, the, the generations before, if they met together, right? If they just come to visit you and, and they got ready to leave, you know what they would say? I'll I, I see you again if it's what? Lord. In other words, it was always talking about the Lord. The Lord always comes. And they didn't do it, just it was in their heart. And when I say heart, I'm not talking about the blood pumper. I'm talking about the pearls. And when we learn to do that, give them, at least put God on their mind. Now that's left up to them if they're going to leave thinking I done got over on God. But it could open their eyes up to who I need. And it was God that gave me this. And that's who I want them to thank. You thank God. That's what I tell them. Thank God. And these two men of God said, silver and gold, such I do not have. But what I do have, and what he was wanting, they had something better than what he was seeking out. <clears throat> but what I have, But such as I have, I give thee. And look who he gave it, how he gave it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, ride up and walk. Not walk, get up and walk because of Peter and John. But in the name of not just any Jesus, because that, that's a well-known name. 
It's a lot of Spanish people in there. What do they call it? Hey, hey, hey but, but I'm talking about Jesus of Nazareth. Yeah. See? Now, this lesson will take place in 31 AD. And the place that it took place in is in Jerusalem. So you can't tell me 31 years after Jesus died, those people in, lived in Jerusalem did not know anything about Jesus of Nazareth. Because you remember those two guys was on the road of Emos? And they didn't know what they were talking about. And Jesus said, who are you talking about? Are you a stranger? You don't know what happened to this Jesus just a few days ago. So you take 31 years later, they've forgotten about everything Jesus did. And this is why they're giving credit where credit belongs. We don't have nothing. But guess what? Let me paraphrase, but we got something better than what you're requesting. Say, so in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now, why were these two men going to approach this man like this about the Jesus of Nazareth? It's because of what we know about Jesus. It's what we believe about Jesus. It's what we have all seen Jesus do. And it's one thing about me, Peter, and John. We've been with him. And one thing we do know is what he's able to do. And let me tell you, I'm going to jump ahead of myself. It wasn't by his faith that he's telling them to do this. It's about the faith that they have. And it's one thing that they know about it. If he does not do anything, like them three Hebrew boys, I know he's able. It's the faith that Peter and John had in Jesus Christ. That's why come on and say, thank you. That night when you said in here, you, 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 you believe there's hope for America. And we shouldn't be doubting. And the hope is based on not America, but it's based on the churches of America who still strive to do what's right according to his written word. That touched me that night when you said that. Because I look at too much news, I guess, sometimes, Reverend Clark. And I see things that happen. This is 31 years, right, after Jesus had went on the Time is not the same as it was 50 years ago. 50 years ago, I was the janitor at our church. And guess what, Reverend, Reverend William? I, I was the janitor at the church, right? And didn't have no key to the church. They had to lock those doors. And, and they had their own lawnmower in a little story room down there. They didn't even have to lock the lawnmower up because it was the church and people respected the church and people would not steal from the church. But 50 years later, they are still every, not only were they still the church, they have robbed the church where we have in church. It is not all of their fault. It's a lot of it is our fault. Like I said, now you gotta pay people to preach, pay people to sing, pay people to do everything. People used to do stuff for free. But it's a time have changed. But these men had faith and they knew that Jesus was able. They didn't have silver. They didn't have gold. And again, there's nothing wrong with wealth as long as you know how to use it. One of the richest men and I know in the Bible was the richest man in the East. Somebody tell me his name. Job. But Joe knew how to help people. And not only did Joe know how to help, Joe know how to help people, but Joe prayed to God that if my children mess up, I'm gonna pray in advance, Lord. He knew God. We just go through the motion of saying we know God now. We know him if he get us in a nice home and a nice car and some nice clothes, we know it. But let you find out how much you know about him when he takes you down in the valley. You want to change your attitude about God. 
But you ought to be the same ones in the valley as you're up on the mountaintop. Because there's people in the valley that need a representative of Jesus Christ to pass through every now and then. Verse 6 we want. Verse 7. And he took him. Oh, this is a good one, y'all. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bone received strength. They had faith, right? Let me tell you something. Hear this tonight. Faith without works is dead. So they're telling him about faith and the work that Peter showed up in. He wasn't waiting for him to get up on his own. He was the one initiating all of this silver and gold, such I have. But, but what I do have in the name of Jesus, this is not the man, he, it's not even on his mind what, what he wanted in some arms. All he wanted some, give me some, make the cup rattle. That's all he wanted, drop a little something in my bucket. They've been doing this all my life, and I'm satisfied with it. But here these men, I got something better for you. And if I'm telling you about faith, I'm telling you about faith. I'm going to exemplify it. I'm going to help you. And that's what you call faith without works. And because of Peter extending his hand and lifting him up immediately, the feet and the ankle bone start working. Kind of like the dry bones a few weeks ago. <laughs> and again, faith without works is dead. Peter took him by his hand, lifted him up. And he did all this in whose name? Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. I'm a representative, I'm an ambassador of Jesus Christ. And not only that, when he took him and lifted him up, what did Jesus say before he died? He made a statement we said all the time, uh, uh, Deacon Weapon. No, I want to know. He said that if I oh, to be lifted up, I draw all men to hear Peter lifting somebody up in the name of Jesus. Yes, See? And again, this is a symbolic of lifting Jesus up. And as soon as they lifted him up, these anchor bones had never worked before. His feet had never worked before. Did you got a date? Uh, she said, got some on his age? 40 years. 40 years. She done showed the teacher something. But I didn't have the age of it. You know what I'm telling you? I'm not down here like I know everything. If anybody got something to help in these lessons, I'm not the type of person that's sitting up here and somebody got some information to help or going to be jealous or, or, or don't want nobody. No. Get everything you can. This man had been like this. You got a scripture to back it up up and so. Gave it to us at the beginning. Oh, I did. <laughs> you have to look over some 40 years. This man had been in this condition, and all of a sudden, here come the men of God. These are disciples of Jesus Christ. These are ambassadors of Jesus. That's who we are. We represent Jesus. Like I was saying, we come in here on a Sunday to worship him, but Monday through Friday, we are serving him. We are ambassadors. We are Jesus out in our community of where we are, a representative of Jesus Christ. And when we get an opportunity to help somebody, that's what we ought to be doing. And let me tell you something. The opposite of that, if you get out there not acting like no Christian and calling yourself one, somebody will say, you hurt the church. No, you never hurt the church. You're hurting your own self. You can't hurt the church. That's 4 and 22. 4 and 22, okay. 4 and 22, so let's we, we, give us a little. This man had been in this condition 40 years. Imagine yourself being in this condition for 40 years. Because we're getting ready to go some. I got some more good news. To be like this for 40 years. And then here come some men, ambassadors of Jesus Christ doing the will of God in this ungodly world that we are now living in. 
and and, and we and he uh, okay we 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 uh, verse seven we was on that when his when his uh, feet started working and lanka bone received strength and it did not he didn't have to there was no prescription given there was no injection in his feet or his ankle this is the power of Jesus and, and when it's happening this immediately this man was able uh, to lift himself up with the help he up. He up. <laughs> yeah that, that, we get ready to go right there what you say in verse 8 there it is right there in verse 8. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple walking and leaping and praising God. Now we might be talking about why he did it but put yourself in his position. Now let me share this with you. It doesn't necessarily just to have to be you paralyzed but there's some people in this world going through some condition. That in their mind and in their heart is equivalent to being in the same condition this man is in. And that's what I'm going to tell you. If things is well in your life, when you get into the Lord's house, it, it might be old raggedy hoopity cock, but if I can get from point A to point B, man, when I look at that stuff going on over there in uh, Haiti, and y'all remember when they had the tsunami in Haiti? That was Christian with the Haiti, and they started setting up churches. Haiti started doing good. Haiti started striving. But oh, I think it was about a year ago, they killed the president of Haiti. Uh -huh. And now it's in a mess. <clears throat> because Satan is trying to destroy the work of God. But Jesus said, I come that I might destroy his work. So we we still in America, and and, and 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 thank God, I'm gonna have to start changing something I said. And I was almost say America used to be a nation that in God we trust. But if the church is still there, we can still say America is a nation because of the church, because of people like you and I, people that still believe God. People that are, st are still standing for what's right. I, I, I want to say something. That something ha ha happened here Sunday. Sunday morning. When I come to Sunday school. And I'm going to tell you why I, I want to talk about this. Uh, we, we know we have young people and they just didn't do their job. But we had two young men saw the condition that the church was in, right? And, and knowing that this is the church anniversary, the greatest day of them all for the church. And I've been telling you, I've been excited. I, I was excited. And it was activity. I was down here about two, two or three days last week and it was always activity down here. People getting the church ready uh, for this big event. But when uh, Cedric noticed at the yard the grass was really high in the yard. He got with Reverend Rister, right? And they came down and mowed the lawn. Now, let me, this, and this is what I want to share with you all. If someone would have called me on a Sunday morning and said the, the church lawn no need mowed, because of the way my mama raised me, if, if, if just, could I try to draw a picture for you to see? If, if I had something I was doing on, on Saturday, and I told Mama, Mama, could you just let me get up and do it early Sunday morning before I go to church? I didn't dare approach my mother like that. Because what she said, Sunday is the Sabbath day. You don't do nothing like that on the Sabbath day. So if I would have got a call, I probably said, no, this is the Sabbath day. But when I saw these two young men, I, I realized that I've been programmed like that. But if it's a need, you understand? If it's a need, you're not violating nothing. If it's a need and it needs to be done, 
God was pleased with that. And that's why I mean, so many things we can't get over because we misinterpret it. And, it's the, and, it's, and if it's the need, that when Jesus was in the cornfield and they was hungry and, and he got something to eat, and they say, you're working on this? He wasn't working. He was breaking out some corn because they was hungry. And, and he went into the temple one day and a man was in there with some kind of bad disease. And he hears, you don't do this on the set. No. See, man, we got to let the Holy Spirit lead us. And it just, it made me see. Now, it was different if I wanted to come down here and do it for work. You understand what I'm saying? But if it's a need, and sometimes we've been, we've been raised up, and we need to let this, I hope y'all see where I'm going with that. Yeah. Uh, doesn't that kind of fit the scripture that says the oxen is in the hole? Exactly. Uh, you're not going to get him out because it's Cause it's, Right, right, right. See? It, it, because, like I'm saying, I didn't dare tell my mama I don't want to do nothing on no Sunday. And like I was telling you, they're out there hooping in my gold on the side of my house. Reverend, Reverend Riffle, I'm going to get ready for Sunday. I'm so mad at mama. But guess what? Mama don't have no earthly idea that I'm mad at her. Because <laughs> ain't no way I'm going to tell mama, mama, they out there shooting in the gold and I got to no, you know better than that. That's the way I would train. You know, but sometimes things happen when you see a need. And, and it was a, that just, that was something that touched me. It, it really touched me. In verse 10, and they knew. <coughs> okay. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Now, this goes back to what I was telling you all. This man was born like this for a purpose. God, did, and this is the timing. He was born like this, so when God could allow this to happen, first of all, for the nation of Israel to see the work of God, to see the condition that this man is in. Now, I don't know if y'all know this, but this 31 AD, the church had not been established. The church got established up in the book of Acts after uh, the Holy Spirit came in on the day of Pentecost. It had not happened at this time. So these people was going to the Lord, how they were still doing a lot of activities that they were doing under the law. So God has got to chain them by showing him things like this. And for these people to see a man that had been like this for 40 years, and here these men coming in as a representative of Jesus Christ. And these are the same people. These people did not believe in who Jesus was. And, and before we leave, I'm going to bring it up again, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. And, uh, and they, verse uh, 10, and they knew that it was he which sat for on at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonders and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And to keep in mind, all this is going on in, in, in Jerusalem. God is doing something. Uh, again, this is 30 AD, uh, doing Jesus' ministry. But they was amazed. You see what the scripture say? Wonder and amazement. 31 years ago, Jesus was doing all of these things. Before Jesus left, he's gone now. This is 30 AD. Jesus did all of this. He was healing. He was working miracles. He even raised Lazarus from the dead after he had been dead for four days. How fast people forget about God's work. And like I'm telling you, things are not nearly like they were 50 years ago concerning the church. And, and I know y'all probably people don't want to hear me all the time talking about uh, 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 Sister Turner, uh, uh, if an hour, in 45 minutes. When we in here over an hour and 45 minutes, y'all not elevated up looking at the people. 
Sister Clark, when I'm in, when, when, when I'm standing up here and I've been here more than an hour and 45 minutes. You don't always have to, facial expression says a lot. When these people are ready to get up and get out of here. But back in the old days, when we went to church, at, we would leave, I would leave home at 9 in the morning. And it'd be about 2.30 when I'd get back home. And, and people was in church all day. And don't fool around and let a shout go on in the church. Reverend Ripper, somebody starts shouting, they may not get out at 3 o'clock. Because people will shout all over the church. And, and another thing, you don't, don't never go up and grab a shouting woman. <laughs> Because you're going to feel some power <laughs> that you didn't know a woman had. And you know what that power was? The power of the Holy Ghost. People was having church back then. And, 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 and the floors were wooden floors. They had the... They had, you remember that sound? And guess what? Dust was coming running up out of the floor. You remember that clock? That's what come up out of the floor. If we worried about those two thermostats on the wall. Hand play with the funeral home name on it. And then people were having some church. But now, and if we don't stop in an hour and 45, we start losing the people. Times have changed. And they were some, and that verse said that these people were wonder and amazement at what happened. But all the time, Jesus raised Lazarus after he had been dead for four days. And they amazed at this. Jesus spoke to the wind, to the waves, and the angry sea. Impressive as a fisherman. You don't let a storm come up on, on a third or Thursday or Friday and think you're gonna go out in no boat on no sir. It takes the water, it takes a long time for the water to calm down. But when Jesus said, peace be still, instantly. Yes. And here they are, 30 years later, amazed at this. What about all that Jesus did? Let's go on. And again, this is in Jerusalem. And as the lame man, which was healed, held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them uh, in the porch that is called Solomon's greatest wonder. Uh, and when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel? This is what Peter said. And what Peter said, because Peter had been with Jesus when he did things of this nature. Why marvel at this? But why look ye so earnestly on us, as though ye our own power or holiness, we had made this man to walk. And, and that's something that we have to be mindful of. Never Take no credit when God work a miracle through us. When God have blessed somebody. When you have went and prayed with somebody and they take things the better, they let you know, man, that prayer really helped me. Don't take no credit for that. We are looking at amazing. By our own power of holiness, we have made this man to walk. And this is, you know, we need to learn from the inner circle. Two of the inner service. Uh, first of all, what Peter is really telling them in verse uh, 12, that, that uh, 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 I and John, we are just mere men just like you all are. Now we are an, an, an ambassador for Jesus Christ, but it's not about our power. See? It's not about our holiness. This man walked, it's about who we represent. It's about who we was following for three and a half years. It's about the one that got up on resurrection morning and glad I am the one with all power. But we are beloved sons of Jesus Christ. Thank God for that. And Jesus is working miracles through these men. Guess what? Jesus want to work miracles through us. 
Jesus want to do great things through us. It's no telling how you affected that man and you see those tears come out of his eyes. Because it's something about when tears run down someone eyes. It's either for happiness or sadness. Yes, and in that case, it, it was his conversation that he had to him pertaining to who Jesus Christ is and who he is. I am a representative of Jesus Christ. But I cannot do anything without him. And we need to learn how to give praises where praises belong. And that's what this, these two men are doing here. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? But why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? No, it wasn't through him. It was through the work of Jesus Christ, who had died, who had went back to Calvary. And it could be a 31, 30 years later, 31 years later, they had forgotten everything that Jesus done. It's, out, it's up for us to remind people of, of the work of Jesus Christ. In verse 13, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. Now, this is something that the nation of Israel was proud of. Uh, uh, but God, the God of our fathers had glorified his son Jesus. Now he's getting ready to hit them hard. See, and sometimes we have to hit hard where it needs to be hit. But I'm going to tell you something. Moderator William told me he, uh, Gospel Way is the only pastor that, Gospel, Moderator William is the only pastor that Gospel Way have ever had. And he told me over the, about the last seven years, he said the people have changed so much that he said when his congregation need discipline, and you have to discipline sometime out of the poor pit. He said, if he disciplined them out of the poor, he said, they look at him like, have you lost your mind? We don't want to hear this. People have changed. You don't have to talk like this. Exactly. And he said, sometimes you have to say, but he said, it's been a, and he said, it just happened over, over the last six or seven years. He says, God, now we, you, you, it's hard to even talk to people when, when they are uh, off track. And the reason you talk to them when they're off track is the same reason we talk to our children when they're off track. We talk to them when they're off track because what we love them and we want to get them back on the right track. And when Christians get off track, God loves them and God wants to talk to them and put them on the right track. But if we don't, Lord have mercy. I do what I want. That's the attitude they have now. I do, what I want. I do And I know just about as much as this as you do. But you don't. Because when you get these little shoes, you can't sleep at night. And, and you're concerned about every member under your leadership. So a lot of nights you can't sleep. And when you find out what's going on, but, but it, it's been a change. And this is just 31 years after he's, he's been gone off the scene. And at verse 13 again, uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they love to hear that. The Jews love to hear that. The God of our Father hath glorified his Son, whom ye delivered up, and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. This is why this man was lame, and God is taking this opportunity to talk to his people. First of all, he wanted to strengthen their faith in him, but he's also telling them about their wrongdoing. In that verse 13, uh, 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 and, and just to hear a little bit what it says. Now, this is Luke again, right? This is Luke speaking in the book of Acts. Somebody run over to Luke 23, 13 through 23. And we're going to find out why he's telling them what, what they did. 31 years after he's gone off the scene. He's bringing things back to their memory. Luke 23, 13. Uh, let's go to 23. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me. He talking about Jesus. As one that perverted the people. And behold, I having examined him before you, have found no fault no in fault. this man, touching those things whereof ye accuse him. No, nor yet Herod. For I sent you to him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. I would therefore chastise him and release him. 
for of necessity he must release one unto them at the feast. And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas, who for a certain sedition made in the city, and for murder was cast into prison. Pilate therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake again to them. But they cried, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. And he said unto them the third time, Why? What evil had he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I would therefore chastise him and let him go. And they were instant with loud voices requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. The one that you killed, the one that you denied, the one that Pilate told you, I find no fault in him. The, the one that Pilate told you, I sent him to Herod. And Herod said that he haven't done anything worthy of no death. The same one that, 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 that uh, Pilate said, since y'all want to act like this, what I'll do is I'll chastise him and let him go. Because we find no fault in him. But no, we want him crucified. And we want Barabbas released before Jesus crucify him. And what John, Peter, John, and Ted, this is the same one that healed this lame man. This is not us. This is the power of Jesus, the one that you crucified, the one that you killed, the one that you rejected. This is his works. And I don't know who you got no faith in when you're running surprise, but you need to have faith in him. My brother, my sister, this is what we need in America now. We, we need faith in Jesus. And I tell these people, if I give them one that's under the bridge or standing on the street corner bed, and I ask them, could I say a word to you before I give them what I'm going to give you? And I would ask them, what happened in your life? that you find yourself standing here. And I tell them, and I let them, I'm a pastor. And I tell them, I, I pastor a church where there's a lot of empty seats in my church. And I said, plenty of room. If you want to join, not my church. And I said, if you join up with your church and serve the Lord, I, I don't believe you would have to stand out here big. And I don't go to the scriptures on them, but I, I, I have that conversation. And I mean it when I'm telling them that. And, and the reason I tell them because of what uh, 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 David said. He said, I'm an old man. I, I was once young. But, but now I'm an old man. But never in my life have I seen this. And make sure the righteous forsake him. Nor his seed begging for no bread. And the reason I said it, if you're out here, you're not right with God. And all they need to do is just give their life to God. Accept God in their life and God can take them from out there begging on the street. But you've got to give the Lord your life. Yes, sir. See about him, but we're not going to run him out. We're not going to run him out. Just check on him. But, but this is what he's trying to do. He's trying to get them to understand who God is. Mm -hmm. He's he trying to get them to go. And, and my brother, my sister, this is our, our responsibility. Mm -hmm. People don't, do not have to be in the condition that they are in if they are willing to give their life to God. Have you ever seen a Christian standing out with a sign, big? Have you ever seen a Christian child? I haven't. I know a lot of, I know a lot of preachers, I know a lot of churches, and I might not know all their children, but I just don't believe their children standing out there begging for no reason. But the key to it, never have I seen the righteous forsake. And that go to, I was saying here, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all the things that you desire. And, and I, I might have just say need because he can't give you all your desire. But all your needs, they will be added. 
People does not have to go through this, but they are going through. And he was telling them, he, he reminded them, and keep in mind, this is 31 years later. And, and look at the world, uh, how it's done changed from 50 years ago, or, or 20 years ago, 10 years ago. Yes, and, and people need to be reminded of who Jesus is. We didn't have the, the, our world in the condition that it's in now. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you. Luke 4, 33 through 37. Now he's talking to them because the reason Peter and John is talking to these people the way he is. They, just, they didn't know who Jesus was. They had forgotten who Jesus was. Did they ever know him? I remember, it was the Jews who said crucify him. It was the Jews who said kill him. But since they didn't know who he was, this is the same Luke. Let's find out what Luke's saying in Luke 4, 33 to 37. We're getting ready to head for the finish line. Luke 4, 33 to 37. Luke 4, 33 through 37. Saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thy Jesus of Nazareth? Art thy come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One that's what, Now that's right. That's, that's why I went there. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and heard him not. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with the thought and power, he commanded the unclean spirits, and they came out. And the fame of him went out into every place of the country round about. That's it. Yeah. Did you go all the way to 37? Okay. So what we find out in this verse, remember in, in verse 14, he said, but Jesus, but ye denied the Holy One. And Luke is said over in Luke uh, 4, 33 to 37, he said that the devil said, telling Jesus, I know who thou art. The devil know he's the Holy One. Okay? So, what we ought to know, what they ought to know, the devil knows. The demon know. And this is Luke telling them over 433 and 37. And not only did they tell him when they when the devil was telling him he's the holy one, Jesus told the devil, hold your peace. Now, do you know why Jesus told him to hold his peace? Jesus don't need no devil telling nobody who he is. The life that Jesus lives speaks for itself. He don't need no demon telling nobody who he is. I'm just being who I am, and that speaks for itself. You don't have to walk around. I, now, if you want to wear a chain, a necklace with Jesus on it, that's left up to you. You want to tattoo you with Jesus on that's left up to you. But just live the life. The devil know who Jesus was, and the devil know who we are when we live the life. And he let them know who you don't know. The devil knows who I am. And he told the devil, shut up. I don't need you telling nobody nothing about me. Because right. my life speaks for itself. My works speak for it, its own self. So that's all we got to do. As Christians, disciples, live this life before this world that we are living in. And he said, and kill the prince of life whom God had raised from the dead. Wherefore we are witnesses. What you've seen happen over here with this man that was born like this is proof of who God's son is. It's proof of what God sent him in his world. Whatever you need. He was lame. He was born lame. In other words, he had problems. Sister Clover, everybody got problems. And if he could fix this problem, your baby, your problem ain't merely this big. 
But if he can fix his problem, he can fix all our problems. If we know who he is, that we do his will, if we live the way he wants us to live. And the name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong. We're talking about the man that was lame, who you see and know. You know the condition that this man was in. Yea, the faith which is by him had given him the perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And it was not even his faith. It wasn't the lame man's faith. It was Peter and John's faith. They acted on their faith in Jesus Christ. They acted because they knew what Jesus could do. This man here is just a living testimony. And God let him be born for this reason, that they would come at this particular time. 31 years, they forgetting who Jesus was. That's how to bring the thing back to their remembrance. He was the recipient of their faith. Luke's vision of killing Jesus and God raising him. Let's go see what the Apostle Paul had to say about this. Paul showed up later on. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 10. When we get ready to close it. Now this is Luke. Telling them about who Jesus is and what Jesus did. And he let them know you are the one that killed him. But God was the one that raised him up. <laughs> First Corinthians 15, 3 through 10, through 10. He's talking about, they trying, he's wanting to get the people to Jesus. And what, he, what we need is to get people to Jesus. This would be a better world. You got it? First Corinthians. 3 to 5. 15, 3 through 10. Okay. For well, I deliver to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remained to the present. But some have fallen asleep. After that, he was seen by James, then by all the apostles. Then last of all, he was seen by me also, as by one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, who am not worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. Verse 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Ooh. And his grace toward me was not in vain. But I Thank labored you. more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. That's Paul. Yeah. Telling who he is. He made himself known to him. He had made himself known to all of us. Right. The reason we're here because Jesus had made himself. And this man tell about who all had saw him. He was seen of me. And I was born out of due time. He said, but I labored abundantly, more abundantly than they all. He wasn't boasting. He said, because even though I labored, but look what he said, it was not I. Paul but it was the grace of God which lives in me. And I, when I was saw, I died. Saw, I died. But who you see now, yeah. when you see me, you don't even, you see Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Because he lives in me. Yes, sir. That your problem, that our problem, to follow Christ, if we want to get rid of our problem, we want joy that the world can't give and the world can't give it away, follow him. But let me tell you something. It's easy to say that I'm following him. To follow Christ, that's something that we all must have to do, and it's hard to do it, including me, is to deny myself and take up my cross and follow him. And again, this all has happened because of the faith that Peter and John had in the name of Jesus Christ. John 14 and 13 in red. 
Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father and the Son might be glorified. My brother and my sister, it's about the Father and the Son. And we ought to be thankful that God made a choice out of us to be an ambassador for him in this world that we live in. I want to tell you a little story, and I'm going to close it with this little story, if you allow me to tell it. It's a little story about a mom that had a daughter. And she raised that daughter up in church every Sunday, as long as she was under her roof. Her and her daughter, they was in church. Things was pretty well in the mom's life. They just like everybody else. They struggled, but they always made it. They kept a roof over their head. They kept food in the cup. They kept decent automobile to go and do the thing they needed to do. They always had a few extra dollars in their pocket to do whatever they wanted to do. But her daughter left home and was living out in the world on her own. But she was struggling. Life was hard on her. She lost all of her joy because she's out in the world trying to make it on her own. And she came to her mother and just broke down and telling her mother, I know what my problem is. I know that I need to get back in church and put my faith in the Lord. Telling her mother, I know if I do this thing will work out in my life. She was saying all this to her mother, but she never made the move to come and join a church and give her life to Christ where she would stop having all these problems that were just, she had no joy. So after it just kept going on and on, the mom was in church. So after church one day, she told the pastor, Pastor, I need to talk to you. I got a problem, Pastor. Could I come and talk with you? And the pastor told her, come on into my office. And when she went in the office, she was telling the pastor about the situation with her daughter. Life seemed to be terrible for her. She don't have no joy. She's miserable. And she knows that she needs to come on back and give her life to Christ. He said she has, the mom said she got faith in her, but she just would not make that move. And she started crying, and the pastor said, baby, don't cry no more. And she said, pastor, what do you mean you don't know what I'm going through? He said, now I got something to say to you. And he said, you're waiting on your daughter to react off of her faith. He said, you're waiting for your daughter to act off of her faith. What kind of faith do you have in God? Do you have enough faith that God could turn your child around? Saying if you got that kind of faith, you got to have to wait on your daughter, your faith. So don't waver in your faith. And you don't have to cry. So if you got the faith, God got the power to turn your daughter around. But he says, one more thing that I want to tell you now. Now if you're asking God over your faith to turn around, you might not want him to turn around the way God could turn around. But he said, it might take that. And he said, stop crying because if you got the faith, God got the power. And God could turn around. And in our lesson today, it wasn't the man that had the faith. It was the men of God that had the faith. And a man that hadn't walked in 40 years. He just didn't go in the church house. He did something that someone else wasn't doing. He was leaping and jumping and doing what? Praising the Lord. He wasn't in there like somebody sitting up here twiddling their thumb. He has something to be praising the Lord for. And whether we know it or not, we got something to be praising God for. And things is well in our lives. And I don't like pointing no people out, but I see two men right here I admire. One of them coming here on a, in a wheelchair. He went from a wheelchair to a walker. He went from a walk to a walking stick. He went from a walking stick to walking on his own. 
And I saw another man. And everywhere the church go, try to right there with this church. Don't let circumstances get you down. You keep following God, and you can still have joy, regardless of what your circumstances are. And all you got to do is look around you and you'll find somebody who's a whole lot worse off than I am. Right. But if you know Jesus, you could tell the world this. I don't care how bad my conditions is, this joy that I have. World didn't give it. And I don't care what the world throw at me, the world cannot take it away. Let us bow our heads in a moment of prayer. Father, we come today to thank you for this lesson. We thank you, Lord, that this man was born for a purpose, that you would strengthen the faith of the nation of Israel. Father, our strength needs to be strengthened in America. We need to get people back to looking to you, Lord, for everything. Everything for us, our daily lives, for our political leaders, for the trouble that's all over the world. Oh, Father, we had the faith. He said, Jesus said, if it just the size of a mustard seed. When he's talking about problem, we know he's not speaking about Everett's, but problem comes into our, all of our lives. But Jesus has the power, Lord. He loves us, and he came that we might have life, and that we might have it more abundantly. After 31 years, the nation of Israel, I like they had forgotten everything he done. Amazed at this man walking, Lord. One of the most amazing things that I know of is he raised Lazarus from the dead after he had been dead for four days. He, he's the same Jesus today as he was yesterday. And he will be the same Jesus forevermore. And then, Lord, we have Brother Ward's been present at our Bible studies. Father, he was raised up right across the street from this church. His father was a dedicated member of this Green Meadow family, and he loved Green Meadow, Mr. Ward, his father. Father, whatever this man stand in need of, we praying for him tonight, that you would touch him, touch him in a mighty way, that he would know what we're doing down here studying your word, and that if he's coming, Lord, this man, all he wanted was arms in the form of money. But these men had something better for him. They wanted to introduce him to Jesus Christ. It's our prayer, Lord, that you would put the spirit of Jesus into Brother Ward. Yes, sir. That you would touch him in your own way. That he would focus on you, Lord. And if you want to keep coming down, that you would touch his heart, that he would come seeking your word. That you could make him a child of the most high God. Turn him around. Not only turn around, but use him to go back through your neighborhood. But he would tell somebody what you've done for him. Bless him, Lord, in your own way. We know that you're able, if you will. We're asking these things. in the same one that John and Peter taught us about the night. See, we know we have none. But such as we do have. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Heal him of whatever he need to be healed of. In Jesus' name, this is our prayer. Amen. We want to thank you for a marvelous church anniversary, Lord. You blessed us in a mighty way. And Lord, we thank you. It's going to end our service on tonight. And again,